which is what would happen when you miss it, and they go to the, uh, the turtle, go to their knee. So what happens, okay, whenever you have a dart, is that you have to anticipate the possibility of them turning all the way to the uh, the turtle. If they go to their knees, the dars you, you will you should lose the dars, but you get them in a Japanese neck dive. So you have the dars, Japanese neck dive, and uh, anacondas. They're all interrelated. Okay. So as I'm here, you go here. He goes for his knees. Okay. Go to uh, to the right. Okay. Now I don't have the dars, but what I have is okay. My right hand still in position. Okay, first of all, I have my little palm recording, that's what I was here, but <laughs> I turn my hand, palm up on the back of his neck, and I get a gable grip. I drop my shoulder, and I want to roll him over his right shoulder. I don't care if his arm is out there, but just for purposes of not hurting, tuck your right arm in there, okay? So what I want to do is this. I'm going to get here and drop my shoulder. I'm going to change the angle, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna push him over his right shoulder and I'm gonna tuck his head underneath. So as I go here, wait, don't, don't go yet. I'm gonna tuck his head under and he will fall back to the side, giving me a good angle here and a really tight dars. Right here. Okay. So the turtle. Okay. So look, you have a, a front headlock here, okay? I like to do with the spot because from here obviously I would just hit you with the lapel. But one thing I like to do here just for fun is this, 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 this. We have guillotines and all kinds of stuff here. Because from here you don't want them just to sit because they're going to be kind of moving and all this kind of stuff. This this also works right here because you know where the handle goes. Then you go right back to it here. You know, and then as you turn the corner here, this hand comes up. This one palm up right here, okay? And I drop my shoulder so that I wanna bring my elbow down. Put your head off the metal a little bit. I wanna force his head down and see how he already rolls out with pushing this way. And right when he falls, I shoot that through here. And you have a deep doors from the central and north-south. You go back here and you wanna pull your shoulders back and then push into him here. Japanese necktie. Okay, palm up. So you're here, palm up, and I want to bring the elbow in because I want to apply pressure to his head here. So easily he goes, change that angle, drive with that shoulder, falls, shoot that through and lock it, even though his hand is not behind me. I'm okay with that because I still have Dars and he didn't have a chance to pull it out. Just here. Okay. One more time. So the Japanese necktie is just to, just to get him back in Dars position? No, you could finish him with a Japanese necktie too. There's a lot of pressure here. And sometimes you could just get him right here and just start pushing <clears> this <throat> down. Except what happens is to relieve that pressure, sometimes they end up rolling back in the dark, so you have to be ready for that. So what I like to do is go on the elbow, as you're here, okay? Drop this, and I, as I push and pull them, you shoot it through right when they fall. Because there's this moment where he's basically got his arm next to his neck, and you shoot it through right here. Okay. Last time. Elbow. One, two, change an angle, drive him right when he falls on his right shoulder. Alright, palm up. Okay, let's go. One, two, three. And then I'll show you how to do the dark from the bottom.